John Charlie Kirk is also now one of the founders of the new Falkirk Center at Liberty University. You know, Kirk's a Bible-believing Christian, and he's teamed with Liberty's President Jerry Falwell Jr. to educate and fight back against the assault on Judeo-Christian values. So here's some of that interview, and it was during our visit to our Faith Nation studios where he talked about socialism, Christianity, and the rise of atheism in America. The fastest growing religion in America is atheism. Mm. And I tell, I challenge Christians to be as bold and evangelistic and persuasive as atheists are. And, and sometimes Christians don't. And so there's two ways that you can, this is way oversimplified, but basic two ways I see Christians dealing in this atheist world. One, there's a philosophy that we should be 100% correct theologically, but go create our own communities and never talk to anyone externally. Mm -hmm. Basically becoming pseudo monks in the hills. Or the other, which is what I like to embrace, and what Jerry Falwell believes at Liberty is go forth into the world, understand you're gonna be persecuted, you're gonna be called names, you're gonna lose friends, especially getting involved in civic in engagement and political engagement, mm -hmm. but understanding the fulfillment of the gospel of Jesus Christ as being the salt and light that he calls us to be. And look, I mean, our values are under assault every single day, under a secular, atheist, leftist, Marxist um, movement within our government, within our culture, within higher education. And our failure to recognize that and do something about it might be the end of America. By the way, the rise of socialism, a huge deal. By the way, have you heard Jesus is a socialist? I don't know if you heard that. No, that's nonsense. I hear oh, this all bad. the time. Oh, my bad. I'm sorry. I'm I, I saw that. I saw I'm, that. I'm happy to debunk that, too. Well, that's why, total why, don't you, why don't you do so? Because the, the, well, there's, the there's that, a younger generation well, that's right. believing I mean, Well, the stuff. fact that Jesus was anything except the savior of the world is preposterous to me. That somehow he was something about a, of a working class philosophy in the mid-1800s. Somehow that's what he was <laughs> when 1,800 years earlier he was dying for our sins and being you know, a lot bigger than just some sort of political philosopher. Time and time again, a couple points. Time and yeah. time again, Jesus Christ was given the opportunity to get engaged in government. He was a much higher caller than, calling than that. Think about it. He's one of the only people ever in documented history mm -hmm. to have such a widespread impact outside of political government influence. So even if you look at Napoleon, look at Muhammad, Alexander the Great, Julius Caesar, they worked through the instruments of government. Jesus was like, that's not, not why I'm here. Right. Render unto Caesar what is Caesar's, but I'm above all of it. Give unto God what is God's. God's dominion is what we're all under. Mm -hmm. And so, but he didn't argue for any sort of specific governmental structure intentionally. Number two, everything he called as far as helping the poor, the Matthew 5, essentially, the yeah. Sermon on the Mount, yeah. the charge for us Christians, it starts and ends with the individual calling, not the collective calling. Mm -hmm. It's super important that you can't abdicate your own responsibility to somebody else, to some other authority except yourself. <laughs> you yourself give up your cloak and your tunic. You yourself turn the other cheek. Now that's hard because you want to give up that kind of, oh no, no, it's somebody else's responsibility. No, no, no. You go help the poor individual that needs to be clothed, that needs to be fed, that needs to be taken care of. Mm -hmm. That's a call of individual that, of individual um, of responsibility. All right, politics. Look, uh, how does it feel to be the uh, basically hated every day by the liberals? Great. <laughs> I mean, I have comfort in what, why I believe what I believe. I, I get protested from Berkeley, Stanford, UCLA, UT Austin, University of Florida. Um, I, I just, the, the hate, I mean, I know this sounds silly. It just doesn't bother me. Uh, I know why I believe what I believe. I embrace any sort of backlash. I love discussion. And look, under the most harsh fires is where the most amazing iron can be, can be cast. And mm -hmm. I find that to be definitely the case. The more I travel, the more kind of protests I get, the more people I talk to, the more I understand why I believe what I believe.